Dude, stoked to talk about the new stuff, dude. Thanks yes. for coming in. Thanks for making the hike down despite the fucking blizzard outside. Yeah. It's like not actually a blizzard, but it's negative it a thousand might as well degrees, be. dude. Yeah. yeah, you can move out, whatever you whatever you gotta do. Um, but man, start with the construct paradise stuff, but I want to talk about the Euclid stuff first, so the new stuff that's happening now that is a lot more exciting than our old nostalgia bullshit. Dude, I wanna start I saw you guys put together so uh, Euclid is a new band you're part of. Yes. Kevin Lang, thanks for coming through. I'm Thank terrible you. at intros. Thank you for having me. Yeah, dude. Appreciate it. Um, um, I guess I'll introduce myself. I'm Kevin Lang. Yes, I've been uh, the vocalist in Construct Paradise back in the day. If there's any tri state people that I've ever heard of us, oh, um, yeah. there's got to be at least one. Yeah, <laughs> there's got to be at least one. Um, and uh, now I'm the vocalist of Euclid. And uh, I'm so far feeling very good about it. Hell so. yeah, dude. I know you got a music video out, you got a album on the way yes i want to talk about you did like a full band live playthrough that i thought was so sick dude thank how you how did that come together where did you film that what was yeah what was going on there so um this guy julian um his last name is escaping me at the point at the moment i apologize for that but uh <laughs> julian is a close friend to maddie and now a close friend to euclid Hell yeah. and um we were kind of like looking around because like so it was kind of cool the way we did it because it's maddie's friend yeah. and he has this like studio away from his house and we went in there, and he had this whole team of like you know it multiple camera Cameras, angles and everything. Like headphones and uh, up, yeah. he just had a big control desk with his computer, and he was like, "All right, you guys are gonna stand here. We did the leveling and whatever." Yeah. And uh, I didn't, I wasn't sure if we were gonna do like a full like retracking of the song, like yeah. cut by cut, like each riff, you know, best consistency. He was mm -hmm. like, "No, we're doing one shots," and That's we were so just sick. like, "Oh, cool." So yeah. you know, the guys, we did like one take. We were like getting used to it. We did another take, and then we did the third take. But nice. I wasn't in it because okay. we didn't have the room for me to be. Hooked yeah, up I with noticed the you were in a separate room. I didn't know if you yeah. were in like a. So yeah. they had me in another room at his personal house, and then gotcha. I did my one take there. Got gotcha. you. So your so, one take was technically later. Yes, but still all raw, yes. still all one take. Exactly. Got gotcha. yes. you. Hell yeah. So dude. it was it was very fun, and it was kind of cool to see because it's like. Damn, like I can't wait to do this in front of people. Yeah, you know, like I think that. it's so sick. Yeah, it's such a smart way to put it out. I think yeah. just as a a unique thing, and also it's like, yeah, this is what we sound like. There's yeah. no bullshit. I think exactly. Yeah. Always with any deathcore band, any heavy band, it's like, yeah, but what does it sound like live? Exactly. It's just mud. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. no, no, no. This is it. Is this? This is yeah. What it is. It's such yep. a good like almost sales pitch. Of like exactly. That's pretty much why we did it. Yeah. Was just to kind of just be like, yeah, we've been a band for a while. We yeah. didn't really put out a lot of content. Yeah. We're all adults, bro. Yeah. We're like in our thirties, late twenties. Yeah. So we're kind of just like, all right, we're done with the whole, you know playing every show that gets thrown at no more vfws like yep. we're older yeah. guys and uh <laughs> you know we have jobs and careers can't be yeah. doing this every weekend yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. got to be worth our time to yeah. you know step away from our families and do what we have to do mm -hmm. but um it's nice it's nice to kind of get it out there and start getting back into it again hell yeah dude so I know there's an album on the horizon as well. Yes. Is there anything we can say about that? Or is that still, still, I, uh, I did some Facebook stalking. So that's where I'm yeah, coming yeah. from. Yeah. Put you on the spot it. here. But yeah. Um, yeah. So we, so, all right, right now. So we had a whole lineage of like, we just wrote mm -hmm. music, right? Yeah. For like a full year. Yeah. We practiced like once or twice. And then Matt Kowanowski joined the band. He's a close friend of ours. And then when he joined, he really kind of just, kicked it up a notch he, he was just like yeah lineup, he was dude. like hey guys stop fucking around we're doing it hell yeah hell so yeah. everyone um, needs that and we needed that kick in the butt because yeah. i think we are all still back in that like oh we got to do this we got to do this kind of like mm -hmm. just taking our time with it yeah, so yeah. once he got involved we got artists we got this we got recordings we got producer we got this we got that we just found all of our personal friends hell yeah so that's one thing I find super cool mm -hmm. about being in the Connecticut scene back in the day. Yeah. Is that all of the kids that we grew up with are yeah. huge now. Uh, you yeah. know, like I can't say like there yeah. isn't one. Yeah. They all have. And yeah. it's yeah. the last year I've reflected on that and I'm just so proud of everybody from the Connecticut yeah. scene and what it what it was back then and where it is now. Like yeah. The Connecticut scene didn't die. Yeah. I just think all of the talent is where they just should be. Grew up. It's Hell out yeah. of Connecticut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Definitely. it's incredible to see. And I'm was, hoping that we can jump on that scale as well. Dude, please, please do. I would hope you do. I think <sighs> yeah, I me too. Listen to the old Construct Paradise stuff and it was like, damn, dude, like there's 
there is something here. I know Euclid is a different <laughs> yeah. branch of it, but it's a more mature thing. Like it's a, yes. It, that is, I guess, I look at Kachuk Perry as like a predecessor, a precursor to what it is now. Yeah, and it's kind a different of. band, different group, different artists, but like, yeah, you're all growing, maturing, and that was yeah. the 2010 version Ooh. of what we thought was cool. Don't yeah. Uh, and then yeah, now it's the, the mature adult version of, and like you said, I think you guys all are adults. You've all done this before. And I think right. that's exciting that it's, it's not a first band for anyone. You're right. all coming to the table of like, yo, we know how to do this. And I love that there's the... Uh, you mentioned there was the kind of moment of like, we were all trying to do this and that, and then someone came and gave us a kick in the pants, your drummer. Yep. I think that's a really common struggle for bands too, of like, we everyone knows we got to put out content, but everyone's also an artist and it's like, no, it has to be the right thing, the perfect thing. Let yeah. me shape it all. And you need someone to come along and be like, no, 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 put it out. Yeah. Get it out. Exactly. Keep putting stuff out the door. Don't yep. worry about this perfect shit. Don't worry about, yep. get it out. 100%. Yeah, because that's really what we were doing. We, was, we were micromanaging riffs, micromanaging vocal yeah. takes yep. and... Yeah, you just really have to kind of just be like, ah, oh, that's it. That, like, that's yeah. the one. That's yeah. the one that goes, and you just have to fucking leave yeah. it. It can know? always be tweaked and perfect. And yeah, for me in music videos, the same thing of like, I can edit this thing forever. I can yeah. play with the colors forever, the skin tone, everything can be played yeah, yeah. forever. And you just got to get to a point of like, no, it's done. And I think I get that exercise once a week, and yeah. bands get it once a year. So yeah. it's probably real tough to like, yeah. okay, let it go. It's done. Let yep. it out. Uh, how's that been kind of like getting back into it? You guys all have been musical music histories in the past. Yeah. How's it been getting back into it and kind of dusting some of that off again? Oh, man. It was unbelievable. It was yeah. an unbelievable feeling. Um, so the way I got asked to be in it. So so Construct Paradise, um, I'll just kind of touch base why we kind of are on the wayside. So um, I love all those guys, um, every single one of them. Um I think that I was dealing with a lot of issues sure. and I don't think that I was mature enough to be uh, in the position that I was in with that project. And had I actually really, you know, had this self-reflection period during that time frame, I feel like Construct would be a lot farther mm. than it ended up uh, being. Um, and I take responsibility for that. And the other thing is to, the you know once we had split ways, the original uh, version of it, I kind of mm-hmm. tried to bring it back with mm-hmm. other people, and we started to do it, and then it just that was again my fault. I kind of just tanked and went down a different direction that had nothing to do with music, and yep. I need to I needed to figure myself out before I had other responsibilities, and uh, so within that time frame, uh, we kind of just all. Did our own lives mm-hmm. and I was doing a live stream on Facebook and at this point I'm pretty sure I was still drinking and I was drunk as hell on a Facebook live just doing vocals over a song that I made and uh, it was the most ridiculous unrealistic song that you've ever heard like yeah, yeah, no yeah. one could play it it yeah. was just stupid and uh just written with too many breakdowns yeah too many just like dumb yeah, yeah. and uh Matthew Connolly hits me up in the group chat he goes lol want to be in a band I was like, yep, sure. <laughs> Let's do it. And yeah. uh, they sent me all the – I mean, I've known these guys. These guys Definitely. are the Depths and Tides guys. Mm-hmm. So um, Tanner is probably one of my best friends of all time. He's out in a different state now doing his own thing. But he got me close with them. Mm-hmm. And once I got close to them, I remember seeing them live um, like a bunch of times. But the one that struck out to me the most was when they had played uh, at the Worcester – I think it was I forget who the supporting like they were supporting the artist of but I remember hearing their guitar tones and them yeah them performing and I was just mind blown. I was mm-hmm. like I do not understand why these guys are just a local band. They're always tight as hell, yeah. They were incredible. Yeah. And I was like and I remember watching them and being like I wish Construct was like half that tone. Yep. Because those guys are all gear nerds you yeah. know what i mean yeah, like yeah, they're yeah. like we got the best three thousand like they're just all into that shit and i respect it i yeah. just too poor to do that myself yeah. that's why i'm a vocalist so yeah. um but they had all this shit so i was like oh man like i wish and then lo and behold a couple years later that's dope yeah maddie hits me up so i was really stoked um once i joined because they sent me all these demos yep and uh I do love me my prog. I love my gent bands and yeah. stuff. But yeah. I grew up a deathcore kid. Yep. And uh, you know, Whitechapel, yeah. um, Fit for an Autopsy, like yeah. all yeah. And uh I always I I think that's another creative difference that I had with Construct Paradise because mm-hmm. 
I was writing those songs from a t- two different perspectives. Mm-hmm. As a guitar player, I am more impressed by the intricacy of progressive metal, yeah. essentially. So bands like Periphery, Volumes, yep. Novelists, all that. Like Those bands inspired me for my guitar playing. Mm-hmm. So when I wrote Construct songs, I wrote them that way. Yep. Which was tr- really trying to push myself to do something I've never done before. And then when I do my vocal stuff, I'm all the way deathcore. Mm-hmm. So there is no in between, yeah. right? And I was, because I didn't know any better. Yeah. So when I wrote these songs and I took my deathcore voice and put it on top of these songs, yeah. and then, you know, Tom's angelic Chester Bennington yeah. voice, yeah. it was just like subjectively good. Yeah. Like there's elements of it on their own are good. But mm-hmm. like together, I didn't think that it meant, like mixed very well. Sure. So when I took, I'm only a vocalist in Euclid. Mm-hmm. So when I go into Euclid, they're a death, death core band. They are. And I walked in there and I was just like, I'm home. You gotcha. know what I mean? Yeah. This is what I needed to be doing from the yeah. get-go for this specific skill. It's an interesting uh, th- set of bands where everyone comes in with their own unique blend of genres that they yes. like. And everyone is always compromising to some degree. And there's mm-hmm. a couple examples that come to mind of like, yeah, it's tough to produce two separate things out of your out of one creative brain right and to have these voices then yeah you're compromising with six other people who also have such a diverse and hopefully somewhat aligned but like yeah yeah you're always compromising to some degree and it is must also must always be a balance of like yeah how much how much kevin can come through and how much is this about the band right i had issues like that with um with construct when i would write stuff i'd be Mm -hmm. like this is something tom would write or like you know or Mm -hmm. i'm not saying that i wrote the whole album myself Mm -hmm. like Obviously, I had their, you know, they had their mm. input, just the parts that I was responsible for. Yeah. So it was kind of like challenging to kind of, yeah, put all that stuff together for a group of people that all have yeah. different creative interests. And of course, it's what is a what is the right song for us, and and it gets away from what is the song that's coming out of me most naturally. Yes. And then there's always a conflict there of like I still love this thing, but it's not the first thing that's coming out of me, and so there's yes. always going to be some. Yeah, some compromise there, something that's not quite as pure or as true as maybe my first option would have been. So it's funny uh, that you say that because that was realistically the underlining meaning of why Construct kind of started to split. Mm-hmm. Because the songs, I'm capable of completely composing a song from start to finish, mm-hmm. from instruments to vocals, and then you know do my little bullshit mix just to make it sound good for whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm capable of writing an entire song. I had done that for the new Construct Paradise stuff. I had gotten good with um, my biggest inspiration for starting how to do my own recording and uh, engineering was actually Chris Wiseman. Um, Chris Wiseman, I remember I was recording that with him in his college dorm room, a couple songs for the Construct EP, and... uh, I was in his college dorm room and his his roommate was literally like on the bed next to him, just had headphones on and we're just, you know, doodling around on his laptop at the time. And I was just like, wow, this is so cool. Like for context, Wiseman is literally in Europe at the moment. Like, yeah, yeah. The shadow of yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so it's like, flying back to go to Kurtz. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So like, <laughs> dude, I just, I have so much respect for Brian, uh, Chris and yeah. Ben and all that. Yeah, like, yeah. dude, these guys. I used to hang out with them, like go to Chris's house. His yeah. mom, you know, would make us food and like Chris <laughs> would make us food, you know, hanging out at his parties and stuff. It's That's just wild, wild yeah. to see the difference. But anyways, yeah. so Chris um, was my biggest inspiration for in, uh, mm-hmm. recording and, and engineering. I could write a riff, but I could not put them together. Sure. Visually seeing someone as talented as Chris mm-hmm. put a song together at such a young age like, because the way I see it is it's not just putting riffs together. Chris was capable of taking my mix-matched brain and lining it up to make a cohesive song that's that he had no creative input in He's like your interpreter. First. <laughs> right, yeah. No, that's exactly how I took it. And I was like, yeah. how the hell does his brain work like that? Yeah. And it took me so long, and then I figured out how to do it myself for, mm-hmm. my, for myself. And the biggest thing was like, Specific shit, transitions, yeah. fills, whatever. Negating any of that, once you actually have a cohesive start to finish, it becomes a lot easier to actually rationalize that creative yeah. input. So when I started making these songs naturally, the songs that came out were like Vilt Harda and fucking like it was progressive. Yep. The time signatures are all fucking crazy and it yeah. really tested my ability. But I had started writing in mind of my 
vocal capability mm-hmm. and that transmit like that completely changed mm-hmm. my writing and i would bring it to the guys and say i have this song and i have this song and i have this song and they're like that is way too fucking heavy dude. <laughs> like no yeah. one no one wants to do 230 bpm blast beats yeah. you know yeah and then gent after like that's just ridiculous I think so, I would have liked that, but I get yeah, that. I, I did the minority. That's why I yeah. wrote it. I was like, I would like that. But yeah. Um, so, yeah, we kind of just dissipated. It was this creative difference. Yeah. And then now with Euclid, the first album, I didn't have any instrumental input. Actually, that's not true. I helped compose the solos for the record, but that was after the fact. Um, but, yeah, I had no no input on the instrumentals for that album. So, and the first album was actually released with Will Ramos on vocals because he was technically the first vocalist of Euclid. Damn. Yeah. And Speaking then, of dudes who are doing well right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Two thumbs uh, up for that guy. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> I was mad too because they're just like, yeah, do you want to be the vocalist? Will Ramos just left. I was just like, yeah, you want me to fucking walk in and just <laughs> wow everyone now? Like, we're still local, so it doesn't matter. But, um, oh, yeah. We're not local. We're not locals. Um, anyway, so, uh, yeah, fucking, uh, Will left, I joined, and um, sorry, I'm high. I forget what else. I, was I didn't even know. Yeah, I didn't I know. know you. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know you had to fill Will's shoes. That is an enormous. Yeah. Oh undertaking. yeah. Like, how does that? How does that feel to then walk in? It's like, I think normally bands leave their previous members on bad terms. So I think normally when like you're joining a band, you're joining, they're going, thank God this douchebag is no longer with us. Bless our soul that Kevin's here. But when the guy before you was really good and left yeah. to go do an even bigger thing, I yeah. assume, was that to go to Lorna? Or, yeah, I'm pretty sure or, that was the case. Um, um, he didn't leave on bad terms with anybody. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's we, like, like, how do you, when it's bad terms, it's so easy to come in. But oh, when yeah, you're following yeah, yeah, a good yeah. person, yeah. that must be so hard to come in. It's like, they're all best friends. You're joining a friend group. You're joining musically. And then... Yeah, you're watching him do that. It's like, yeah, how do you how do you find comfort in that role? Um, so I at first I I like thought about it because like they sent me the EP and like just Will is a fucking animal. Dude. He is, yeah. He's an animal. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was like, if I will put it into this, uh, this perspective, there would be no point in me coming in and trying to compete with his ability mm-hmm. because it's out of my wheelhouse. Yeah, I'm good at what I do. Definitely. So yeah. and um. I respect the absolute fuck out of Will Ramos and what mm-hmm. his what his everything that he does. That man has mastered that talent. Yeah, him and yeah. a small echelon of yeah. other individuals that are nationally yeah. the best. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, In, or yeah, that's Even, what I mean internationally. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like yeah, and it's kind of cool to know all of those people. Yeah. You know, it's really yeah. interesting. But it, yeah, so Will left, and uh, when I walked in, I was like. These songs are insane. Like, if you guys, like, they didn't expect me to do what he did, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, The difference between my style and what I do, as opposed to what Will did with the the older stuff, I use my voice as an instrument along the composition of the song. So instead of showcasing certain things um, in certain areas, I kind of just like stay in like a nice range that I think fits. Mm -hmm. I add my character, my personality, and whatever. But a lot of it, like, I go for lyrical clarity and um, because every song that I write has a meaning to it. Um, Lyrical clarity and just letting the instruments breathe where they Mm -hmm. need to. Because I do think there are some vocalists out there that, like, there's some incredibly composed songs that just the way that they're mixed and the way that the other, like, members of the band had uh, their input, I think it bleeds over into a lot yeah. of other like um, parts of the songs. Like sometimes the vocalist is just a little too much, and then you kind of all you hear is the kick, and then everything in between that is gone, mm-hmm. and then you kind of only know the songs for like snippets, yeah, um, for just parts that really wowed you. Um, and I feel like that happens a lot. There's nothing wrong with that, and I think that there, you know, it there's a different reason for those kinds of songs. Um, I think that is purely just talent showcase. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. I respect that. Um, I just prefer a nice Mm -hmm. linear, like you can listen to it, you can remember choruses, you can whatever. Because when you guys come out and see us, I want to be able to have in-depth conversations with people. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to, you know, it's a little bit more personal in my opinion. Yeah. 
So I didn't really think I was competing with anyone. I just think that I was doing things differently, doing things my way. I think that's the key is to the, you, uh, yeah, I'm glad you tied it up there because that's exactly what I wanted to go back to. You said like, I'm, I was never going to be him. Like none of us are going to be Will Ramos. That is, a, that is a mountain none of us are going to climb and right. bless his soul for getting to the top Correct. of that and like creating you, sir, that mountain. And, you, sir, were born uh, from hell, <laughs> came out and was just as a baby. You're like, yep, I'm going to um, be the best. And for me, it's and a similar it, t- in music videos. Like there's times I've, uh, I look up to a guy named Oregon McGinnis a lot. He's done a lot of music videos for a lot of the metalcore bands. Yep. Uh, and I'm, I guess a lot of uh, outside of that. But anyway, uh, I did a video for a band called Hollow City in Louisiana, and their previous videos were done by Ori. And so it was one of those, like, fuck, I love this guy. And I respect his videos, and I'm watching the previous videos he'd done for them, and it's like, I, I, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> like, yeah. I, that's just not what's going to come out of this, and I'm I'm flattered to be trusted with a project after him, but, like, yeah. damn, I'm not going to be him. And yeah. I had that same moment of, like, yeah, I'm not going to be him, but what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Exactly. Uh, and I'm glad you said that. I think that's a really important thing that we all – get caught up in is yeah you watch Lorna Shore take off and it's like every band is like okay how can I have the TikTok clip now and it's like you right. can't you're just right. gonna write a song and if it if it resonates with people it'll resonate and if it doesn't right. it doesn't right but you're never gonna be them you're never gonna replicate that that right. is lightning in a bottle that is never gonna strike twice right uh, and yeah, I think it's a really important thing for people to take away is that like yes yeah it's find your way and I think um, there's an influx of this and it's not just the metal community mm-hmm. it's every artist out yeah. there. But they've seen the formula. They've seen the social media formula and how to access that for popularity. Mm -hmm. And I do see a lot of individual artists and other bands that kind of see these current projects and see how they're blowing up on social media and solely write music for that purpose Mm -hmm. rather than, you know, you can tell me that you're really into something, but when you rip off like full like melodies and like you know stuff like that it's kind of just like yeah just reevaluate what you're doing there's a weird balance of art and business there right um the the argument i think that you're making is that they're leaning too far into the business side correct and it's like be the artist still yeah and there's a there's a weird integrity and purity thing there and again i can speak to the music video of like there are tricks that i think are tacky that will work every time right and it's like how often do i want to do that and right. just because i i can push the button and i know that button will work uh eh, yeah how is it worth it and yep. sometimes it is sometimes it is like yeah let's do the thing because we need the t-shirt to sell let's put the the thing on it that we know is going to sell the most shirts right and sometimes like no dude make the thing that you artistically value the most right and run with that yeah yeah i agree it's <laughs> And that kind of like when you were saying like, I'm not going to be this guy, whatever, like that is your time to remove yourself from the business and be an artist because you could try to be that guy and give them a product that a, you, you may be proud of on paper, but the, you know, like you might not be at the same time morally Mm -hmm. be all right with it. What I gave them was mine and it's, uh, the videos are actually out now. Uh, they're overthinking an American wasteland. Is that, yeah, that's the two of them. Um, for anyone interested but yeah they both came out well and they're both videos that i look back and it's like ah fuck this is where i would have gone different but looking back but i think that's probably the same with records is yeah you always look back at the single and it's like fuck i would have rewritten that vocal part i would have done this really different that word should have been there should have been a pause here yeah it should have cut the the out like are there are there any moments of that that stick out to you looking back at iniquity stuff yeah oh not so much iniquity yeah um not so much iniquity uh but this is such a stupid story, but Please, like yeah. when I went to Dude, record, that's why we're here. For I know, stupid stories. I know. I'm just full of stupid information. Like I live my life, and it's just like I just that's do dumb shit. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like, I went to, I drove all the way to Taunton, Mass, and uh, I remember I was like on my way there, and I was gonna be recording Iniquity. It was gonna be our single, and uh, I had gotten way too high, and when I got to his house, I walked in. I had not met his fiance at the time yet. I walked in, and uh, my friend Tanner and I kind of look similar. So um, we always get told, like, we look like – you remember Tanner, right? Yeah, yeah you so guys do we, look we, looked, we look similar. Yeah. So yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> fucking – I was introduced to her as the guy who looks like Tanner. Okay. So when I showed up at his house, I walked into the basement, and I had that, like, cotton mouth, like, gaggy, mm-hmm. whatever. I needed to drink something, and I didn't have anything to drink, and I just – Real quick dry heave. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm throwing up. So I went upstairs Fire. and uh, she was on the couch and she's like, hello. <laughs> and I just like waved at her, walked in the bathroom and sh- like vomited in the bathroom. And then I was in there for like five minutes. I was trying to throw up as quiet as possible because it was yeah. like, 
but like it's not gonna happen. I walk out of the bathroom and I was just like, I just turned around the corner and she's sitting there and I was like, hey, I'm the guy who looks like Tanner oh. and she's like, wow, you look like Tanner. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I just threw up. Sorry. She's like, do you need anything? No. She's like, all right. And then Maddie's like, the fuck is wrong with you, bro? And I was like, I don't know. Walk downstairs and I recorded Inequity with. And those are the, the stems that, stems that are stem, on? Or, yep, yep, post-puke. <laughs> that was that whole song. Fun fact for anyone. Hell You're going to yeah. listen to that song differently now and be like, ah, what an idiot. Well, but, hear the authenticity in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was the initial question you asked me? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, listen back to mistakes. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, shit like that in mind. I, I'm the only one who knows shit like Well, now everyone knows that shit. But um, – I listened to the album on the way up here because it was literally – the album is 42 minutes. So that's how long my drive was. So I listened to it on the way up and I can pinpoint mm-hmm. specific locations of things where I'm just like didn't like that. Mm-hmm. Wish I did that. And I remember the day and I remember how I felt after I did the take. And I was like maybe with processing it will sound better. Yeah. We're a year later – didn't sound any better. It's you know what so I mean? It's so weird. I'm so, so happy you bring that up. Uh, there are definitely the same moments of video of I, I can think back to 18 months ago of a specific choice where I didn't push this button or I chose not to toggle this setting or whatever. Yeah. And it's that same thing of, yeah, you in the vocal booth and you can still smell it to this day. Yeah. of like, there's yeah, yeah, nothing yeah, yeah, to do yeah. with it. But it's like, yeah, you could still be in that moment of this one choice that was totally insignificant in the day yeah. and somehow your your brain can find it in the, in the yep. hindsight. Yep. And yeah, pinpoint that exact thing and you go, oh, fuck, why did I do that? <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. That's the human brain is very interesting to me. Yeah. I've, I've, yeah. I've navigated through that for a while. You've always done it in your lyrics. I think that's always been an yeah. interesting thing as I explore some of the contract stuff and I'm sure some of the Euclid stuff now reflects it similarly yeah. is that there is a um, – you're not putting words together for the sake of putting words together. There's right. a very intentional right. and conc- – not even concrete. It's very intentional and thought-provoking uh, yes. thoughts. Into Thank it. you. Uh, what kind of things do you like to write about? What are some of your um, – I'm super glad you asked that question because um, – so. Uh, this record is the f- – also uh, another thing too. This Euclid record is the first um, music venture that I've taken in a professional manner. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done that completely sober of any you know, substance abuse issues or anything like that because I struggled with that for a long time since I was like 16. Hell yeah. So you know, for the first time in my life actually having clear forethought, yeah. um, I had taken a long period of time. It's another reason why Construct, we needed to take a break is because I needed to just get right, you know. Yeah. I think it's um, a mature thing to do. I think it's a real hard choice to make. I'm yeah, sure and it was definitely in. challenging. Um, and I sympathize with anyone who uh, struggles. And yeah. um, I do know how hard that is. Um I love talking about it because I feel like my experience definitely could be beneficial to people. I do plan on maybe trying to transfer over to that like uh, like information side of things with mm-hmm. my own little venture eventually, but I want to get a little bit more experience before I jump the gun. But of course, yeah, yeah. Um, I do feel like I'm on the up on this situation. Oh, so yeah. um, I'm really stoked to hear that. I know I want to keep you going, but yeah, I can't tell you enough how happy I am. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. You remember the, the days thing. back when I'd be absolutely <laughs> fucking annihilated and just a mess in public. They were tough. I think I always recognize you as someone who was working to do their best. There's somehow there's yeah. You, I felt like you were always working to progress, and that always stuck with me. Of like, yeah, you weren't always in your best shape, but you were always kind. You were always good to me. You always yeah, took care yeah. of me. You always made sure I was taken care of. And there was a genuine sense of like, now Kevin is going to be better one day. Yeah. And that was really important to me. Yeah. Well, still I appreciate is. that. And yeah. I'm glad to see that come to fruition. Yeah. 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 yeah it's definitely, um, I don't agree with, uh, just on a mm-hmm. side note, I don't agree necessarily with uh, bad behavior when you're intoxicated or mm-hmm. use, I mean, using is not, is a little bit more of a gray area because I think it's a little bit more psychoactive, but um, I just don't agree with the whole people turning into assholes mm-hmm. when they're in a different state of mind. Cause I feel yeah. like your moral compass is there sure. naturally. Yeah. So unless you are masking a lack yeah. of a moral compass and when you're inebriated, it, the true you comes out, that's the only way I can describe it. So it's kind of like, it puts into perspective how you view some people sometimes because yeah. no matter how sick you are, you're still, you're still, you. you're still mentally you. So, yeah. you know, but either way, um, I write, this album, I wrote a lot about that topic. Yeah. Um, I, uh, not just the substance stuff. So, like, the way I wrote some of the songs, 
it's mostly from viewpoints. And um, like another thing that I wrote about was uh, men's mental health. And like we're a metal band. So like I had to kind of make it grotesque and like fit a vibe. But it's like still art. I think every but, yeah. yeah. The the initial like arcing reason that I wrote it is very clear if I were to sit down and explain to you why I wrote like a certain verse, mm-hmm. you know, like um, breakdowns and shit. Um, yeah, I wrote it about overcoming abuse, substance abuse, domestic abuse. Um, what happens to you if you leave that part of your brain untouched and unevaluated, mm-hmm. um, I guess is a lack of better term. If you let that fester, what happens? Yeah. And also I spoke from like, uh, there's one song, um, I wrote where I'm talking to myself as an addict mm-hmm. and then I'm having the, uh, you know, substance talking from their perspective, but they're saying the same things, but one's predatory and one's as a victim. So, and it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So like, um, I do that a lot where I talk from multiple perspectives Mm -hmm. with the same reasoning in the middle, but it's just two opposing spectrums. (laughs) So that's pretty much what I wrote the album about. And then there's two songs that I wrote about. Uh, I wrote about an anime song that no one will know. And then I also wrote about, uh, a video game, this one. I'm really stoked for it because mm-hmm. it's my favorite song on the album. Hell yeah. And I'm going to tell about this one because I want people to know. The song River Pig was about uh, Elden Ring. Killing Godric the Gold and going over to Caelan. Okay. And just as if you were to take yourself out of being a, a video game player and yep. put yourself in the character that you created and throw yourself into Caelan after you just fought like the scariest looking fuck thing you can imagine at that time. And you walk into this like rotting wasteland of everything and you're just like everywhere you go, it's just like you died. You're just fucking mad the whole time, losing your shit all the time. And uh, I remember like trying to find places to like save and like not get <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. That's literally what the song's about. I know just... nothing about Elden Ring other than that. Like I've seen people play and yeah, I know yeah. that it's an incredibly hard and an infuriating game yes. and it's very – tedious and the idea of having deathcore playing while i'm listening yes. is just so fitting that is yes. like the the perfect just desolate wasteland yeah, music. yeah exactly it's like, fuck finally we find someone to save exactly <laughs> yeah yep. that, felt, that feels about right i felt that That's vibe funny. so i was like yeah we're doing it oh yeah do you think people would know it was about elden ring without you saying it yeah there's I like think so if you like in there. yeah there's like words and references that are mm-hmm. specifically for that yeah but, um i would hope so i'd be like disappointed if no one got gotcha. it Gotcha. I didn't know how subtle it was or how yeah, yeah how blatant it was. Um, <laughs> it's about fifty fifty. <laughs> Enough. It's there. It's cool without knowing that, and yeah. it's cool with knowing that. Yeah. So that's kind of the way I think about it. Uh, is it uh, on the topic of sobriety? Is it nerve wracking then to go back to stage? Because I would assume that the studio is probably comfortable or an easier transition in sobriety. Where I assume getting back on stage feels like that would be the, the more testing moment or more troubling moment of being in the venue and. Um, yeah, the public settings and all those things. Yeah. Um, no. I'm not really too nervous about it. Um, I get like, you know, back in the day, liquid courage, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. Like you have a different, you know, perspective yeah. on yourself and your confidence. Um, within learning about myself, because like what I don't what I don't think a lot of people understand about when you have to get clean from something is um first off, there's the physical withdrawal you are physically dependent on a substance Mm -hmm. so like there's a period of time where absolutely nothing is going to get you through that other than perseverance yeah once you get beyond that then typically what i see is like at least this was my experience too but a lot of people they have a laundry list of responsibilities yeah things you're delinquent on debt uh, yeah. responsibilities relationships all these things that you had just destroyed right yeah. you don't know which one to go for first and that was my issue um, you don't know which one to go to first which one's more important than the rest and within that spectrum is also you know the the developmental point of my life from 16 to 21 or 25 mm-hmm. rather yeah was a, that's a time where a lot of people who don't abuse substances get real far in their life that's, yeah. because they're, you know, like my cousin, Timmy, um, I'm unbelievably proud of this kid. He's, you know, early twenties, he's got a business and he does well for himself, he's starting a family. You know, I'm super, I, I love talking to him. He just came by my house to grab some boots and we ended up 
talking for like four or five hours. Oh, yeah. And uh, I love when he comes around because I love hearing his success story, and it's just amazing to me. But I'm like, yeah. I'm like five years older than him, and I'm just like, well, well I'm working. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> sure. It's just it's just wild, you know, yeah. to to look at the difference. Would I be wrong to say that I look at certain opportunities and say, like, damn, I wish I, I did that instead? Yeah. Of course, but you know, these are all aspects of when you get clean. You're you're reflecting on that time period. Mm-hmm. There's two ways you can take it. You can do what you normally do. Is when a challenge comes to you, you table it and you grab a drink and say, "I'll do it tomorrow," or smoke, you know, whatever. Um, I'll do it tomorrow. That procrastination is the constant cycle and why that laundry list continues to get longer. Yeah. And what I struggled with was um, I, w- I would relapse constantly like for a period of time uh, before I actually got like 100%. But um, what would happen was uh, I would have like all of these challenges that I think I'm doing well. I think I'm on the right – you know, I'm on the come up and doing things differently um, and a challenge will come. And that challenge, I did not put in my new preparedness itinerary for mm-hmm. this month. So when that challenge hits and I'm unprepared for that challenge, the first thing my brain does is if I just don't worry about it, for right now, I'll handle it later. And then that slowly that would yeah. trick me back into it. And what I feel a lot of people relapse for is the easiest part of stopping to abuse a substance for me in the case, like the, the most abused substance for me was alcohol. So it, the easiest part is to put the drink down, right? You put that down. That's cool. All the shit that comes after is where the battle of sobriety comes in. Yeah. That's where there's challenges, there's relationships, there's understanding, there's guilt, Mm -hmm. all of the emotional, you know, periods of life that you have just, blew through because you were just completely out of place. You're now feeling all of that at once. Yeah. And you're still trying to deal with life's challenges and you're trying to learn about how you're supposed to operate. Mm-hmm. Um, that is a challenge. And I remember uh, like yeah. so simple, like the simplest things. I remember this one day I was really down with money cause I, I just fucked myself. You know, I was really down with money and I didn't have anything left, uh, no food or anything. And I had this, uh, bagel with cream cheese and I had seasoned it with like garlic salt, like just whatever I fucking had. But yeah. I was like, yeah. I'm satisfied. This is what I'm eating for dinner. Yeah. And I was walking up the stairs and uh, I forget what it was. I think I like stubbed my toe or like I stepped on something and I just kind of like jerked a little bit. And I had these really soft or not like they were smooth plates. And I went like this, slid the bagels off. They f- like hit the stairs face down. Yeah. Pulled it up. Dog hair, dirt, everything. Bro, I cried. I was like, I can't deal with this. Like this yeah. is... And it's just so uh, yeah. humbling to go yeah. through that experience and just be like, why am I being such a pussy about everything? You really know what I mean? Moment. And like, yeah. you just kind of have to look at yourself. Like, would I be proud of going and talking to this person in this condition? Am I proud of saying that I do this? Am I proud of hanging out with, you know, this group of people? Am I proud of all of, all of these things? Like, what do you do for yeah. me? What do I do for myself? Yeah. All of that stuff happens at once. You have to remove yourself from it in a healthy way and evaluate. Yeah. You have to evaluate. And that until that happens, I don't think anyone is going to truly accept the lifestyle of being high on life naturally, you know? I think again, I can't tell you enough how incredible it is like get through that and go yeah. through on it. just a, a journey that I thankfully don't understand. And yeah. I, it sucks. And it seems just daunting and unbelievable. I think it's also incredible that you're now willing to talk about and share about it because I think that there are other people going through similar things. Right. And, uh, yeah. I think the only – I think one way we can help those people is to just continue to share the stories of right. this is how I got out. This is how I made my life better. And I don't know if it's going to work for you exactly in this way and there's going to be some ups right. and some downs. But this is one thing, one yeah. option, one way. Um, I think the other piece that's really interesting to me is um, I hear it a lot with comedy – of the idea of like comedians get sober and realize they're not going to be funny or worry they're not going to be funny anymore. Uh, and I don't think that's ever true. I think what the the narrative typically is, is that you realize that you didn't need the crutch after all. You are right. now able to be free and as funny as you were and maybe even funnier because you're now free and able to uh, be present and be in the moment. Right. 
uh, are you hoping to have that experience with getting back on stage of like, yes. is it, yeah, you're not going to, yeah, you're now able to perform on stage and not be getting through the set in one way or another. Yeah. That's, yeah. I think, um, when you have a skill, mm-hmm. uh, in general, not yeah. just music, just a skill. I feel like there are certain skills that people are born with, like artists, um, in general, like physical artists, yeah. um, excuse me, uh, photographers, um, like for example, mechanics, uh, metal workers, like all, all of these skills that people have and why we have such a, a an amazing, uh, world that mm-hmm. we live in. Right. Some people are born with that skill and it doesn't matter how long they take a break on it. It is a natural born skill yeah. and just the fine tuning of doing it professionally for a little while really puts in that brain, the muscle memory, the thought process memories, like they're planting seeds in your brain. So, I'm more excited now to do it sober because like yeah. within sobriety, I have like learned that I can learn things and like retain information better. Mm-hmm. And I have a much more narrow um, ability to like pinpoint thoughts that I have instead of like break them down and be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, yeah, like in this like new situation, I'm thinking about it like riding a bike. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get back on. I'm going to have better breath control. I'm going to have more personality. I'm going to be more open to talk to people after or before. Like there's just so much I've unlocked in my brain that I've never fully tapped into in a conscious state of mind. So So doing it is like – I'm stoked, you know. The I'm old really Kevin ex- was incredible at shows, and I'm excited to see that, yeah, I'm that like, upgrade into a, a fully actualized, <laughs> yeah, ready to go Yeah, it's going to be my new crack, dude. I'm going to try and get as much of it in <laughs> my blood yeah. as possible. Hell yeah. Are there are there hopes of playing a bunch of shows this year? I know that there's talks of an album, and usually an album comes with shows, but I don't know how yes. much is happening and how much we can talk about now, but yeah, so, we're hoping. Yes. Uh, March 28th, as of right now, is our debut hitting our stage the first time in Webster. Oh, yeah. um, Webster Theater in Hartford. We're playing with uh, Body Snatcher, Pale Face, uh, Angel Maker, I believe. So I'm excited because uh, I just recently got into Pale Face. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, holy shit. This is like Slipknot <laughs> on crack. And like yeah. I want to beat people up listening to it. <laughs> That's a wild trio of bands. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, fuck. You know, suppressing time. The end fucking rap verse of the yeah. end of suppressing times. Dude, Body Snatcher is another one that I remember they toured through the area and I saw them in like a VFW in Agawam or something. Yeah. It was like a like a local theater kind of stage where they were playing on like this like – like it should have like a kid's church play on this stage. But it yeah. said there was Body Snatcher playing on the stage. <laughs> and sick. there's like 20 people there. And yeah, it was one of those – uh, yeah, one of those shows I looked back and I remember seeing their name start popping up again. I was like, there's no way it's them, right? Yeah. It, it fucking is, dude. And yeah. You just stick with it for this long. It's yep. so sick that to see them, yeah, now playing the, the real venues around here. Yeah, it's it fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. So that'll be our first show. I'm hoping uh, there will be a couple others. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do in terms of releasing the album. I think we want to do like an album release show. I'm not sure how much of that we're going to play because our songs are kind of ridiculous. So to play... yeah. 42 minutes of that. I don't know if the guys are up for it. I'll do my best. I don't care. Yeah. Like if I fuck up or, you know, yeah. just for fun. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the album will be coming out this, this year. Don't know when, but it will be coming out this year. Um, for show March 28th, we have merchandise. Hopefully by then we'll have merchandise for sale. Um, but we're, we're getting back into the swing. We're going to start hitting the stage and we're going to be doing. I'm excited. I'm scared, but I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. yeah me too. <laughs> Me too. I don't that know what's going to happen. Poor Webster. It just got refinished. It's got redone. It's looking good, dude. Throw everything. <laughs> just, <laughs> just people through class again. Yeah, like, yeah. Dude, and uh, apparently Point Beach is opening again, oh. which is one of those like, I get it. You said your past VFWs are past that. But, yeah, like, I know. That dude, place I think does everyone, have my heart. Everyone owes it. Everyone owes it one more shot. I know. Dust I know. it up. Get back in there. And make it happen. One more time, dude. I would, I would love to do that. I would absolutely love to play oh, Point Beach, man. That place was fucking crazy. Dude, I can't believe it. I can never imagine going back there now and just seeing like – because I don't know about you, but I feel like the new generation metalheads like – bro, oh, when man. we were kids, it was carnage. Yeah. All the yeah. time. It was like just fucking drama, car- fights. Unbelievable. Just ridiculous. It's come up on like every episode, which is my favorite part. Yeah, I yeah. talk about it like once Point a week now. Yeah. <laughs> it was all just the things, all the places we've been, all the bands you played with. I know. Point Beach is the one that comes up. It was just, it was so much fun. Yeah. And I don't think the new generation metalheads, the kids that are now our age back yeah. then, you know, like 
they're going to show up and just throw those guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? The fucking pit starts and they're like yeah. this. Like, nothing against them. They're there to actually listen to the music. But, you know, it's just different. So I don't know what the... That was you. me until I had a camera to get to the other side of the pit. Yeah. Like, I would never, you would have never known I was at a show until I had a camera. Yeah. Because I would have been so far back and all the people were just like, yeah, watch, let you guys do your thing up there. I'm going to just be back here, listen to yeah, some tunes yeah. and hang out and, and vibe with it all. The last few shows I went to, I didn't see any, yeah. like, any crazy crowd reactions. So, um, I'm hoping that, uh, that happens. I'm sure it will. I'm hoping that that happens. We'll see some bodies, you know, go flying. I think you guys got some got some breakdowns happening that might might couple. make some people move. Yeah, got a couple. There's a couple heavy parts in some of those songs. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are just. Uh, I can hit this in here, right? Actually, yeah. Um, Thank you. But hell yeah, my man. I think we're getting just about to that point, just about to that time anyway. We're about closing in on 45 ish ish minutes or so. Hell yeah. But my man, so. We got Euclid coming out. We got a show coming up. Where can people follow you, find you? What do they look up? So we have Instagram. Um, we have a TikTok. We have uh, – it's usually at Euclid Official on TikTok. Spell on it. TikTok. Um, Euclid, E-U-C-L-I-D, and then underscore official. Um, we're on TikTok, uh, Instagram. We have a Facebook page. Facebook page is Euclid N-E, New England. Um yeah, and then I have my own personal TikTok. I, I'm the worst with social media. Yep, I took same. like a two year break, yep. and then I came back to it, and like everything's different. It's crazy, and I just like don't like you. It just it's I funny don't like you're talking it. about the kids of the show who aren't ready for what we're gonna bring, and it's yeah. like we're not ready for the TikTok they're bringing. Yeah, so I'm not ready. Some... Like you guys all have TikTok to get fucking huge. I'm just yeah. kind of just like TikTok. Like yeah. I don't know how. Yeah, whatever. Six but... people see it sometimes. <laughs> and you're like, cool, dude. I guess that's. <laughs> you're like... I'm famous. I guess that's viral. <laughs> yeah, um, like double digits one day. <laughs> yeah. So, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. Um, social media. We're we're trying. We're we're fucking. We're lazy with it, but we're we're trying. Yeah. So when the album comes out, we'll be on I'm more sure. and more content. And Hell shit. yeah, dude. So two videos are coming out this year too. Hell yeah. So, um, yeah. That's pretty much it, man. I just want to say thank you for having me. I had dude, a blast. My pleasure, dude. Nice to dude, see you again. Always, yeah, dude, it's been too long. I'm stoked to I'm stoked to cut the record and get to the real, real good guys. Yeah, here. yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, thank you. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you're glad you're doing well. Yes, and thank you. You as well. Continue to continue to make this shit happen. Fuck yeah, dude. I'll cut it right there. 